Welcome to Tech Primers. In this video, we are going to create a web client for the server processing of a reactive uh, spring, which we wrote in the previous example. So we, I had created two different videos on how to create reactive spring using router functions and the spring MVC style. Now from the client side, we are going to access that stream API and then we are going to um, process that using the web client. So web client is a new, um, what do you call a new class or a utility provided by the spring framework. So we are going to see what is that. So let's go and create a client side project. So I already have the server side projects running here. So if you haven't checked out that project, you can use that from the GitHub link from the description below. So I have uh, checked out the same thing, which uh, I did as a part of the example. So I have also al already started that. So we have to create the server side. Uh, we have created the server side. We have to create the client side now. So I'm going to create that from the start.spring.io. So it is going to be com tech privacy reactive and I'm going to say this as so we named this as reactive mongo example. So I will just say this as a client, right? So reactive mongo client. Right. And the dependencies we need are the web flux. So we need the uh, spring web flux. So the dependency is reactive web. So this is going to bring the Spring Web Flux. We don't need anything else. We are just going to use the Spring Web uh, Flux client. So we are going to use the Web client from the Spring API. So I just hit the generate button. Okay, so this is going to save me in downloads. Let me quickly save it. I'll just unzip it and open in IntelliJ. So let me unzip it. So this has got unzipped. Now let me go to IntelliJ and open that project. So what did we name it? Reactive Mongo Client. Right, so I've opened it. So if you go if we go to the pom.xml, you can see only one dependency which is the Spring Boot Starter Web Flux. So this is going to bring the Spring Web and the Spring Web Flux dependencies. Okay, so let's quickly go and start our uh, client. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just write a simple web client which is going to uh, pull the data, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just not going to write any new class or something. I'll just use the same uh, existing Spring uh, Boot application main class and I'm going to use the command line runner to uh, run this particular piece of information piece of code right so that uh, when the process comes up so when my client comes up it should automatically go to the server and pull the data so I'm going to use the command line runner so command line runner as you guys know is an interface which uh, you can use for running anything so you can use it for uh, uh, you can use it like a typical runner right so I'm going to use uh, the return I'm just saying strings okay so now we need the web client, right? So web client is the new API which uh, Spring has introduced, which is similar to the REST client. So if you know about REST client, so Spring has uh, now implemented web client, which is similar to the REST client, but it is uh, web client can do the Spring uh, processing. So the Spring reactive processing and also it is now like a uh, builder pattern, functional style builder pattern. Okay, I need to inject this web client, right? So web client is nothing but a uh, interface. So we need to create a web client before we do, right? So I'm going to create a web client. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, web client dot create and I can give the base URL. So the base URL is going to be localhost and uh, that particular process is running in 8082, right? Let us me quickly check. Yeah, 8082. So this is going to run in 8082 and uh, let's change ours to 8083. Okay, so this is going to run in 8082 and also the rest endpoint is going to be rest slash employee. Right, so let's quickly check that. Yeah, it's going to be rest slash employee. So I have just put that here and I'm, I'm just creating it. That's it. So you don't, I don't have to do anything. I just need to create the web client once. So using the web client, now what I'm going to do inside the command line runner is I need to get the 
and you run the get okay using the get i'm i'm not going to do anything i'm just i'm not going to do uri i am not passing anything now i need to do a retrieve so this is going to do a retrieve so this is going to get a response and i need to convert this into a flux object okay because um, uh, if you see rest slash all right so what i need to do is i think the uri should be all because i need the all right because i have created rest slash employee slash all right instead of empty so i'm just going to give all so uri will be all so for the uri all i'm going to retrieve all the data and i'm going to convert it into a flux of type uh, employee right so i don't have the employee class on the client side so what i'm going to do is i'm going to blindly copy that uh, for now so let me copy this right i'll just copy this uh, class itself and i'm going to paste this here i don't need the document because uh, those were useful for the mongodb so i'm not going to use that so i'll just create the employee class so yeah looks like it is good now okay so now i got the employee class right so now now what i have here is a list of employees and it got converted automatically right now from this if you notice here this is a flux okay so it is like a stream now so you can do lots of things in the uh, in the flux so you can use filters you can use flat maps you can use maps you can use subscribe if you see here all these are there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to filter out the employee whose name is filter peter okay so i'm going to say P, uh, filter and i'm saying employee give me the employee dot name and i'm checking if it is equal to peter so i'm going to get the employee whose name is peter only okay that's what i'm going to do here then what i'm going going to do so after i got the name peter i need to now do some processing right so uh, i'm going to use peter's id and i'm going to call the next api which is called the events right so i have the another api another rest endpoint called uh, employee slash id right slash events i'm going to use that events and pull that using a flux because that is going to return a flux right whatever we are using now slash all is going to return a mono and whatever we are going to use as events those are going to return flux right so i'm going to use that to retrieve again so what i'm going to do is it's like a nested call so i'm going to do a nested call here so i'm going to use flat map for that okay so why flat map because we are going to stream it again right because the response of that is another flux so i'm going to use flat map so i'm i'm saying employee okay here again we have to use the web client because we need to do again another call right so i'm going to call this as web client dot get again and then i need to do a uri again so in this case the uri should be the id slash events so this is going to is going to return a flux now for the id we have to pass the value of the id so i am going to say employee dot get id so this is going to return me the employees id now again we have to do a retrieve like how we did here so once it is retrieved we get the response from the body now we have to convert into a flux right so i am going to convert this into a flux and this time it is going to be a employee event right that is what the class we created so i have to create the employee event class as well so i'm just copying that class as well here right okay so we got that here now after the body is received we are going to return this itself right so because this is a flux if you see the body is returning a flux and flat map would expect a flux to be returned so i'm just going to return this flux here so once i return re uh, return from a flux how do we need how do you uh, uh, retrieve the data right you have to subscribe to it isn't it so we have to subscribe so we just say subscribe and then we get the data from the flux so you can get the data you can consume the data from the flux so what we have is a employee event because uh, that is what we returned from the flat map the employee event is what getting returned okay from the employee event we have to now do something right so i'm going to say string dot out dot print alert. i'm going to just print the employee object that's it so i'm not going to do anything so let me check in the employee event i have a two string so i don't have a two string here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to generate the two string so that we can see the data in the employee i think i should have a two string yeah it is there 
right so that's it so what we did here is so what we did here is inside the command line runner we use the web client we first said okay get me the url which has slash alls under this particular web client which we created and retrieve them and convert into a flux of type employee and from the employee flux i'm going to do filter i'm going to filter out all the employees whose name is peter and from that i'm going to use flat map to call again the uh, web client right so to call again the web client so let me do a cut also to call again the web client and using the url id slash events and i'm passing the id of the employee so this will now retrieve a uh, stream of uh, uh, flux okay and from that flux <coughs> i'm converting it into a employee event object that is what the object is and finally do using the subscribe i'm just going to print this particular uh, event employee event okay that is what we are doing uh, let me run this particular uh, program so So when this comes up, when Spring Boot application comes up, this command line runner should run. Before this, the web client would be initialized. So we are going to see how this works. So this particular ID slash events is going to return the data every two seconds. So we need to see the data every two seconds here in the client side. And this is not a blocking instruction. So the major advantage of reactive streams is there is no blocking call. So if you see here, this is a functional style and the call which is going to arrive is not blocking. Yeah. So if you notice here in the command prompt, the data is getting streamed every two seconds, right? So that is what the web client is doing. So the web client is streaming the data and getting the uh, getting the data and converting into a stream. Okay, and then printing it. And if you notice here, this is not a blocking call. Okay, so if I write some code after this, it is going to get executed. So this is literally not a blocking call. Okay, it is going to be an asynchronous call. For example, uh, in order to prove that, what I can do is I can use a blocking statement here so that I can show you so what I'll do here is I'll just print some thousand so I'll just print the uh, blocking call which I have here and here I'll do a thread dot sleep so that I can show you whether it has got proceeded or not so every one second I'm going to print this okay so let me restart this Spring Boot app. And what I expect here is the web client should still receive the data and also it should have proceeded to this particular loop where we have a blocking instruction. So if you notice here, the blocking one, blocking one is coming here. So I, th I think I should have put I, but that's fine. You get the point, right? So the blocking, this is a blocking statement because it's a for loop and I'm doing a thread here. However, if you notice here, the event stream is still getting pushed, right? So which basically means this is also running and this is also running, right? So that is what the advantage of the reactive stream is. It is going to run in a separate thread and that is pushing or pulling the data from the backend because it's a flux, okay? So that is how you uh, create a client side um, flux processing using the web client. So you cannot use REST client in this case because REST client doesn't support flux out of the box. Now we have to use web client, which is a replacement for the REST template for the uh, flux or the stream processing. So this is used for the reactive stream. So in the previous examples, we wrote the server side coding and in the, in the current example, we wrote the client side coding. I'll just reiterate what we did. We created a simple web client Using the web client, we just created uh, with a URL of the server side. So then we did a get and you can give the URI of what rest endpoint you have to hit. And then we need to do a retrieve. So once we retrieve, we get the body. So from the body, we need to convert into a flux of type something. For example, here it's a POJO of employee. And then we need to do some stream processing. We can do directly a map or a flat map or even you can do a subscribe. But in, our, in my case, I'm just doing a filter. I'm just doing a filter of Peter. I'm getting Peter's information. From Peter's information, I'm using again another web client to get some event stream. So this is going to be the flux, flux uh, event stream and I'm converting that into an employee event object and this is going to run every time a flux is pushed to the client side. Okay. Finally, I do a subscribe. Once uh, this is successful, I get the subscribe and that gets printed. So whatever employee event got uh, uh, pushed, 
it gets printed so that is what we saw in this particular example so I'll push this code into the git uh, repository you can get it uh, from there for reference uh, how it was done the server side code is already there in github as example 1 and example 2 I'll uh, make this as mongo client example uh, so that you can reference it from there okay so that's it for this particular video hope you guys enjoyed the video if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it if you like the video go ahead and like it if you want me to do um, videos on any particular topic do let me know in the comment section below so i'll be able to do that for you so that's it for this particular video meet you again in the next video